Thanks so much for joining me for this little nugget of chemistry knowledge. Today what we're going to be doing is learning how to calculate an empirical formula from data. So let's take a look at the data that's given us. We have 200 grams of a compound and that compound contains carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Now the composition is given here. Uh, if you watch my introductory video, we talked about a little kind of song or ditty that you memorize. It's percent to mass, mass to moles, divide by the smallest, multiply till whole. Well, in this case, we were given mass, so we don't have to do that percent to mass. And I like to set this up as if it's kind of a spreadsheet, because remember, all for one, one for all. It's that kind of cheerleading thing. Whatever we do to one element, we're going to do to the data for all the elements. So let's take a look at carbon. We have 94.74 grams of carbon. We have 21.05 grams of hydrogen. And we have 84.21 grams of oxygen. Now, in this problem, we're not even going to use this number. We could have used that number. Maybe they wouldn't give us all three. The sum of these would have to add up to 200. So one of these could have been missing and we would have had to calculate by subtraction. Don't be surprised. There's going to be a lot of times, especially you'll see temperature a lot in problems, and you don't even use it. It's there um, for a variety of reasons, but sometimes it's not part of that, the calculation. Okay, when I was grading the AP test, I can't tell you how many kiddos, they saw temperature and they saw volume and they decided they had to use Pevener. Well, it wasn't a gas and it wasn't, you know, anyway, so off that high horse. Just be careful that just because you're given a number doesn't mean you'll use that number. So percent to mass. So we've got our mass. Didn't need to do that step. Now we're going to do mass to moles. So we're going to do it for each one of these. Now, note that I'm not using a diatomic mass for hydrogen. This isn't pure hydrogen. This is hydrogen bonded to other uh, elements. I'm not using the diatomic molar mass for oxygen because this isn't pure oxygen gas. That's the only time you would use those as diatomics is when they're pure and not bonded to other substances. Now, you always want to carry out, I say, at least four digits here. So this is moles of carbon in that sample, okay? And moles of hydrogen in that sample. But we don't want the moles that are in that particular sample. We want a mole ratio of these. So percent to mass, mass to moles, now the next step is divide by the smallest. Now our smallest number of moles in this case is oxygen. That means when we have our ratio, if we divide by the smallest, the lowest number in our ratio will be one. Because we're after a mole, not pure moles in a sample, but a mole ratio. Do you notice I'm doing it to every single one of these, okay? And this was equal to 3.96, and this was equal to 1.5. This we can round to 4, but we can't round the 1.5. We're going to have to do that last step, multiply till whole. So since this is a half, what multiplies a half, if you have a half and you want to multiply it to a whole number, you have to multiply it by 2. All for one, one for all. You have to do it to every single one of these. So this means we have three carbons, we have eight hydrogens, and two oxygens in our empirical formula for this problem. Okay, I want to do one more. Might make the video a little long, but I think it'll really help you to do at least one more of these with me, so bear with me on this. Take a break if you need to. So this time we have caffeine. They give us the percent. Um, we have carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and then it tells us the rest is oxygen. So let's take a look at how we find the oxygen. 
So to go percent to mass, we assume 100 grams. So 49.48% of 100 gram is that. So that's all you have to do is drop the percent sign and add a gram sign, and that step is done. Now, we don't have the oxygen, but we do know that the sum of percents is 100, and we assumed 100 grams to get this. Therefore, the sum of all of these has to be 100 grams. So we can find x here. I'm going to assume you know how to do that algebra. And I got 16.46 grams of oxygen. So that's percent to mass. Now we're going to do mass to moles. So mass to moles, whoops, wrong pen, sorry about that. Um, mass to moles, use molar mass. And since we have it labeled carbon over here, it's kind of nice you don't have to label everything as you go because you've got this row labeled. Okay, nitrogen is 14.01, oxygen is 16. And so for carbon, I get 4.1199. Don't round. Carry it out at least four. I carried five. You want to carry four or five. If you don't, when you divide, you may think you have to multiply to get a whole number, and you don't, or vice versa. It may look like it can be multiplied. Okay. Now, I want to show you a common mistake that I see here. <clears throat> We're given the molar mass of caffeine. We're not going to use that until we get to the molecular formula. I have seen students commonly put that in right here and be careful of that. We don't have caffeine. That's that many grams of carbon. I don't have 5.2 grams of caffeine. I have that many grams of hydrogen. So you have to use the molar mass of hydrogen. Okay? Um, so you want to be really careful there. All right, now I need to divide all of them by the smallest, which not surprisingly, it's very often, not always, but very often going to be oxygen when we have a, <clears throat> excuse me, organic compound, okay? And this is four, and this is five, and this is two and one. So we didn't have to do the multiply to whole. We always have to do mass to moles divide by the smallest. Um, sometimes you'll have to do the outer ends as well. So that means our empirical formula is C4, H5N2O. Now, we did this part. It asked for the empirical formula. Now we need to get the molecular formula. So to get the molecular formula, we want to find the number of those empirical formula units that will fit in the big molecule. So the question says the whole molecule is 194.19. If I take four carbons, five hydrogens, two nitrogens, and an oxygen, I get an empirical formula mass of 97.11. So I want to figure out how many of these units are in caffeine. Okay, And I get two. So that means we're going to take this two and we're going to multiply it by every subscript in my empirical formula. So that tells me I have two of these empirical formula units. That's a five, sorry, I mis miswrote that. So we're going to multiply every one of these by two. So that gives us our final answer that they requested as C, oh, wrong pen again, sorry, C8, H10, N4, O2. And that's what I drink way too much of in the mornings. Thanks for joining me. Take care.